Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I try to make a sliding barn door, but with no visible hardware as a surprise for my wife, which leads to a host of problems. Are you sure, are you, sure you want to do this? What? Just replace it without Alana here. Who wouldn't love coming home from a trip and having beautiful custom furniture made? I thought you said Ilana hated surprises. <laughs> uh, she is not a fan of surprises, if I'm being honest. Um, but she's gone for 10 days, and we can totally get this thing built. All right. Let's go for now it. You're making me a little nervous. <laughs> um, yeah, no, she does like to be involved with this stuff, but if we get her involved, this five-day build will turn into a three-month build and this way she can just come home and be pleasantly surprised and not have to do any anything herself sweet all right i don't have to explain myself to you <laughs> I'm, um, I'm here for it let's talk it out should should we do this yeah it's fine yeah all right so scott's told if he lost it i think scott said it's fine all right are we still wrong yes okay Okay, I don't know how to take this off. The previous owners of our house did an incredible job designing it. My wife and I both love the cabinets, we love the doors, we love the trim, everything except this barn door. It looks like something off of the set of Unforgiven, and the house as a whole has a really, really modern vibe, so it just does not go with it, and as long as we've been here, my wife and I have both despised this very, very rustic barn door, which is fine if you're in a log cabin in Arkansas, but that's just not our house. So yes, I probably should have involved her with this design process, but she tends to slow me down a little bit. So I went out and I bought about $950 of this very straight grain walnut, and now I need to rip it into some straight planks. One thing you should be aware of when you're ripping thick stock like this is just how much internal stress there is in some wood. This wood is properly kiln dried and even though I was cutting it perfectly straight, got to the end of a cut and there was so much stress, I'll show you what happened. So this is actually pretty interesting. Walnut tends to be under a lot of stress when you're cutting especially big pieces off of it. And you can see this board is pretty warped right now and it was under so much stress that it actually cracked all the way through. And I don't think it's actually a big deal for this project because it looks like this board should still be fine, but it's pretty common. You'll cut these boards and they'll instantly bow on you. And this one was trying to bow so hard it actually split right through the wood. Now it's worth mentioning, I am doing this the hard way. I am going through every single step of the jointing and the ripping and the planing because I have all those tools. I have the jointer, I have the planer, and I have a job as a woodworking YouTuber. So if you don't have a jointer, a planer, or a job as a woodworking YouTuber, let me tell you the secret to doing this the easy way is you call your local lumber supplier and you ask for S4S, and that means it's sanded on four sides. So you give them the dimensions and they will cut all of these planks at the perfect thickness and the perfect width, all jointed and ready to use. I have a friend that has a big woodworking shop and he does not mess with jointing and planing anymore. He goes straight into the big panel glue-ups with the S4S lumber, which is the real secret to doing this the easy way. Speaking of doing things the easy versus the hard way, let's say instead of a solid wood door, you wanna do a big resin door or maybe just make a big epoxy table. There's a couple of ways you can go about it and there's the easy way and the hard way. And the first way is the hard way, the way I learned is by making a ton of mistakes. and those mistakes cost me thousands of dollars and probably hundreds of hours, but eventually I figured everything out and that's a totally viable option if you wanna go that route. If you wanna go the easy route, you could take my virtual epoxy workshop, which is about a three and a half hour long masterclass format on how to build a wood and epoxy table or even a wood and epoxy barn door if you wanna go that route. It is every single step and every horrible expensive mistake I've made over the years building my, I don't know, maybe, 50 to 80 epoxy tables over the years. So we are running the biggest promotion of the year right now. There's a link in the description if you want more info on that. Something I'm incredibly proud of and I am getting comments from people every day saying that they couldn't have done it without me, which I don't know if that's technically true, but I really appreciate them saying so. And I do know that I've at least saved them a ton of money. 
If it's not quite clear exactly what I've done so far is I used my planer, got them all to the same thickness, used my jointer to get one straight edge, then I brought them over to my table saw where I got that second straight edge and got them all to the same width. I do feel like I should clarify something. Earlier when I said I was opting to do this the hard way, that was specifically in reference to me doing all the jointing and planing myself instead of just ordering that S4S lumber that is completely ready to glue up because I know as soon as that Festool logo comes out, I will enrage a small portion of the audience and immediately lose any of that quote, every man status that maybe I once had but no longer have since I own Festool. And I do try to show you guys how to do things without all the tools that I have, but inevitably I will get some comment from some viewer that says, Hey man, I thought you said this was a how-to video. All I have is a circular saw, a framing hammer, and a leaf blower, and I wanna know how to do this. And I do sympathize with those people, but for me, the most important thing is getting this freaking thing built before my wife comes home. But if you wanna do a big panel glue up like this and you don't own a domino, just do exactly what I did and don't use a domino. The dominoes are really just there for alignment the wood glue will be more than strong enough. And I did it in two separate sections because I didn't think I'd be able to get to every piece fast enough before that glue set up. So I did it in two smaller panels, brought it together to make one big one, let it set for about 24 hours before taking it out of the clamps. Even though this piece was really pretty flat coming right out of the clamps, I only live about 30 minutes or so from this big industrial shop in Portland called Creative Woodworking Northwest. and they are a really nice bunch of guys, and for $75, they will rent out basically any tool in their shop with an employee. So instead of flattening this by hand, I'm taking it, running it through their wide belt sander, and this thing has a planer and two wide belts attached to it. It sands it at, I think, 80 and 120, and you can even ask them, and they'll put on like a 180 grip belt, so it comes off very, very nice. And that only took about six or seven minutes, so after that, I had enough time on that 30 minutes to take it over to their sliding table saw and get it squared up. And yes, I could have totally done this at home with my own circular saw, but I had access to this. I'd already paid for the time and that's Mark there. He is great. He's always awesome at helping me out. So he got this thing perfectly squared up for me all in less than 30 minutes. For years, people were asking me, how do I find a big commercial shop like this? Or maybe even just a small commercial shop. I just need a guy with a decent sized garage and some tools to help me out with the project. How do I find that near me? So eventually I made that website. It's called makerbook.io. It's not a money maker for me. It is just a small token, a way that I can give something back to this community that has been so great to me. I believe we are represented on every continent now. I'm not positive about South America, but I'm pretty sure we're on every other continent except for Antarctica. We have every state is represented now too. So there's a really good chance that you can find either a big or a small shop near you on that makerbook.io. And if you want to thank me for it, I don't do things like Patreon, but all I would ask is if you like this video, if you want to see more videos like it, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button. And if you want even more content from me, I started a second channel, Blacktail Studio 2.0. I know that everybody now does Blacktail Studio Plus or something like that. And this, as I'm told, is a little bit 90s, but it is Blacktail Studio 2.0. It's gonna be where all my how-to videos are. Probably some shorts, probably where I'll do my lives. Just a place where I can post content and not have to worry about the algorithm. So would love it if you subscribe to this channel. And if you really want to, Blacktail Studio 2.0. There's a link to it in the description. I was really on the fence about whether or not this door needed C channels. Eventually, I decided just to err on the side of caution because I don't think they really take anything away from it. You'll never see them. And here is the hardware. It's by a company called Milkasa. And I promise this isn't sponsored. And if you still don't believe me, I bet you will once you hear what I have to say about them. So yeah, there's no instructions. Um, so you do get it. The wheels will support the weight. So I'm not that worried about supporting it. And there's no instructions. Did I mention that? All right, here's, here's another video, but not a lot of info. And this doesn't even look like my hardware. Let me get my laptop. And it kind of looks like an algebra problem. L equals B plus X plus six and 11 sixteenths. H equals Y minus three eighths of an inch plus two, th two and three eighths of an inch. 
There's a lot of really good renderings, but there's not many actual photos, which is always concerning. Like maybe this just works good in theory. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I had originally considered reaching out to that company that makes that hidden barn door hardware to see if they wanted to sponsor this video and probably could have got a few thousand dollars anyway, but then I considered they may not like me calling their instructions an algebra problem and continuing to mock their product throughout this video. So I opted not to reach out to them and now I can say whatever I want. And I have to tell you, since I haven't really been taking outside sponsors recently, it is absolutely liberating to be able to say whatever you want. It's like quitting your job. Although I've already quit my job, so it's like quitting my job again. That feeling when your boss can no longer tell you what to do. It's fantastic and it's really the best thing for you guys too because now you'll get the ultimate in honest feedback because I'm not beholden to anybody. So I will tell you how I feel about all the tools and the products in this video and really every video. And if I don't like it, I'll tell you, but I will tell you where you can get anything in this video is in the video description, like this Festool router and that funny little mortise track thing. That's in the video description along with that sliding barn door hardware. All of that said, I don't hate this hidden hardware at all. In fact, the end result is incredible and exactly what I was hoping for. It was just a lot of work to get there. Little things like cutting this wheel recess to make sure it fit in there just right would be pretty intimidating to your average weekend warrior DIYer. It's really not that hard. All I did was trace it with a marking knife, came through with my router, hollowed out most of it, and then came back with some chisels and cleaned it up. So step-by-step, step, it's not terrible, but yes, this isn't just a turnkey kit that you can bolt onto any old hollow core door. That said, hollow core doors would be way, way easier than this behemoth that I'm building here. So if you do wanna try this in your house, try getting just a standard door from Home Depot and adapting the kit that way. One of the things I hated from the instructions that I was finally able to find online is you were supposed to make a cut all the way through the back of the table and then this kit comes with these little plastic caps that you put on that I thought looked ridiculous and really defeated the purpose of having hidden hardware. So I kind of had to wing this part of it myself and come up with a way to leave the continuous wood grain on the sides and still allow for this hardware to fit in the back. And so what I did, I cut a giant notch with my router leaving just over a quarter inch on each end. The next thing I needed to do is get that aluminum channel cut to fit just inside of that notch. And I am far from a metal worker, but I really enjoy this metal saw. It's one of the few dedicated metal tools that I own. And I got it cut just underneath the size of that notch. So it will allow for some seasonal wood movement of that wood slab. Just another reason why I highly recommend going a hollow core door instead of something like this big solid wood door. And also just found out that these are soft clothes, which is pretty exciting. So didn't even know that when I ordered this kit. In my last video, I launched my first ever tool and that was that little brass hammer that you see there that was a collaboration with Hoffman Blacksmithing and DFM Toolworks. And I was overwhelmed by the response. We ended up selling out in just over a week. So thank you so much to everybody that purchased one of those. And if you are interested, we will be doing another limited run, but it probably won't be till after the holidays. At this point, I was starting to feel a little more confident that I might be able to actually pull this off. And I noticed a small crack on the end grain there. So I almost wanted just to put a little epoxy in it and call it good. But the last thing I wanted was to have this up and finished inside my house and have that crack spread. So spent a little bit of time, probably about an hour in all, made a miniature little bow tie that probably wasn't the greatest bow tie I've ever made. Cut a recess, got that in there, and that will ensure that crack doesn't get any bigger in the future. In my last video, I took a large, clean, single slab of walnut with nice, straight, continuous grain, and I filled it with a bunch of contrasting, highly figured patches of walnut in kind of a weird Tetris quilt pattern with just these little patches all over it. And I was met with fairly mixed results. I knew a lot of people wouldn't like it, but I don't know if anybody disliked it more than my wife. And I'm not faulting anybody for not liking a particular style because it is definitely a very particular style, but it is really the opposite of what the obsessive compulsive people like. The people that like nice, neat order, it's the worst thing for them because it's basically disorder. And this one here, I had this kind of ugly big knot hole and I wanted to patch it, but I had to be very conscious of doing something my wife would notice. So instead of a square patch, I went and I found some curved grain and I tried to line it up the best I could. And 
I really, really didn't want her to see this because she hates that patchwork so much. So I took my time, made this as nice as I could. Just lining that grain up took me over an hour. So we will see if she notices this. I also intentionally put this at the very bottom of the table where I don't think she'll be able to see it. In my last video, I asked if anybody had any suggestions for what I should call that patchwork table that sounded a little bit cooler than patchwork. And in a previous video, someone had named the table the dolly table, or the Salvador dolly table, and I thought that was pretty clever. And I had a guy, Benici was the first person to come up with this. He suggested calling it the Picasso table because of his cubism mo movement. And I thought that was really fitting with the patchwork, but I didn't want to call it the Picasso table. It sounds too boastful. It sounds like I'm saying I'm like Picasso and I don't want to get shoehorned into that. Me naming my pieces after famous artists that would probably hate my work. So my favorite name, it wasn't the most unique one, was the glitch table because it really did just look like a computer glitch. And I think the first person to say that was named Frosty. I also looked and there was 208 other people that came up with the same glitch title, but I love it. I think it was perfect. I had a ton of other great suggestions. I had a lot of people suggest Patch Adams, and they said, hey, you should name it that for Robin Williams, not the actual doctor who was named Patch Adams. So I thought that was kind of funny, but thanks to everybody for the great suggestions. This one isn't cool enough to merit a name, so no need to give any suggestions on this barn door. At this point, I felt like I was really, really close. All the hardware's installed, all of it fits nicely, but before I actually add the finish to this, I wanna make sure the hardware functions because I've never used this before. I don't even know if this is gonna work, and I did find those instructions online. I made these measurements to the letter. I have a perfect outline of the mounting plate there. And these anchors, they came with the kit. So I just had to get those installed. I do have a tip for you is, if you're drilling into a hollow wall and there's not a stud there, you get resistance, probably stop. I didn't do that. And I'll show you what happens when you do that. But got the anchors installed. I was actually pretty confident. I was joking around with Scott when we were doing this, but I thought this was gonna be kind of a one and done. And I got it mounted. Again, this is all the hardware that came with it. There's not a lot of weight that actually rests on that. So I know it seems like those anchors aren't a good idea, but again, they're part of the kit, but it just didn't work. It was way off, it was binding, it would barely roll. Pretty frustrated and I'm really playing this down because I spent a long time troubleshooting this. And eventually what I figured out is those anchors, because I remounted them an additional time, so I had made too many holes. So I had to get, I had to patch that. It wasn't gonna work and cut it out. I was gonna patch it with some more drywall or maybe even a piece of plywood. Found this. My first thought was that I drilled into a gas line and even though I didn't smell gas, I was terrified we were all gonna be blown up. So I got on the phone, made some calls. Luckily, got some good news. I didn't know you're still in here. Uh, good news though, you can be in here. It's not a gas line. Um, we got a couple things to check, but the important thing is it's not a gas line. I am terrified of round tubes in my walls in general, and especially when they have holes in them, but I was relieved to find out it was a vent line for our downstairs bathroom, which was a pretty easy fix, and I could move on to actually fixing this door. And one of the things I figured out was my floor wasn't perfectly level. These instructions said that the floor needed to be perfectly level, and I was like, oh, how do I re-level my concrete floor? So instead of re-leveling that, I added some playing card shims under one wheel at the proper amount or the proper count of cards, and it actually worked. It shimmed everything up and I was finally ready to add the finish. The finish technique that I'm using here is the exact same that I used on that glitch desk in my last video where I took 50% Rubio Monaco Walnut and I diluted it with 50% of the Rubio Monaco Pure just to make it a little less aggressive. Since I'm using actual Walnut here and I don't need it to be any darker, I just want to kind of homogenize all of the colors and the wood I'm using, I should have mentioned, is steamed walnut. And generally, I hate steamed walnut. It really mutes the colors, but what it does is what they would do for like hardwood floors to make them all essentially the same color is when you steam it, you really blend that sapwood, the edge of the wood, that lighter wood, with the dark wood, and it makes it more uniform. So I'm using steamed walnut along with the stain to make sure all of the colors are pretty consistent. I will admit one of my concerns and one of the reasons I'm using this stain is to make sure that patch on the front blends in and my wife doesn't see it. And I want to strangle anybody who says happy wife, happy life. And they say that's the key to marriage. Those people are losers. Don't listen to them. The key to marriage is this. Make them think it's their idea. That is the best advice I ever got and the best advice anybody can give anybody. 
But I made a mistake. I did not preload this project by making her think it was her idea. This is entirely my idea. So I have to do it perfectly. Otherwise she is not going to be happy because the design likely won't be exactly what she had in store. So at the very least I need to hide that patch, blend the colors, make it nice and uniform. My solution for mounting that bracket directly in front of the pipe was to take a piece of plywood that spanned two studs screw that in and this would enable me to use some heavy duty wood screws on that bracket that were short enough that wouldn't go into the pipe. However, patching this drywall, this made me more nervous than any other aspect of the project because I'm not great with drywall, I'm just okay. And I've told my wife that this isn't a practice house. If I can't do something as good or better than a professional, I'll hire it out. And I think that's a good policy to have at this point in my life. But I had to call my friend, he gave me a bunch of pointers and in the end, I freaking nailed it. I'll show you some shots of this drywall. I did a better job on this than the door. You probably noticed that this door doesn't have a handle and that's by design because I wanted a really clean minimalist look. But what else that means is it is going to get a ton of filthy grubby hands all over it. And most of those filthy grubby hands are gonna be coming from me and I know just how filthy they are. So to protect this finish from the commercial cleaners and the grubby hands, I'm using the new Blacktail Studio N3 Nano Coating. And this is basically an invisible layer that bumps up the sheen, bumps up the contrast, but it also bumps the protection up. I have done so many tests with this and it is absolutely incredible. It is so much better than anything else I have used. It is a product that I could not be more proud to be a part of. And it's not for sale today as of the time I'm doing this voiceover, but it should be shipping mid to late December of 2022. So. If you want to be on a wait list for that, or if you want to know all the details of this Blacktail Studio N3, I'll leave a link to get on the email list for that in the video description. So bad news, I didn't quite get the door done on time and Ilana got home the night before at about 1 a.m., walked by this and was aware we did not have a pantry door. I didn't think it was a huge deal, but apparently we're having 30 people show up in about three hours. And if you don't know, you must have a pantry door to host a baby shower. So called Scott, scrambled, got this done, got the hidden camera set up, got it dialed in and just barely made it in time for Ilana. Hey babe. Hey babe. What you doing? Uh, what's your name? Excellent, look at what I got. You got something else? What? We got something else. <gasps> You did so good. I can't believe you got it done in time. We got it done in time. Am I allowed to touch it? You are allowed to touch it. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Get push a little harder. It, it is heavy. It is a little heavy, but I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> Careful. Oh. Wait. Soft closing. Wait, we don't. We don't. We don't mess around here. Oh my god. So in theory, I don't want to tell you this. It's like a blanket statement. You can't slam it too hard. Why are you moving me? Are you, are you recording this? Wait, I would never record you again without you knowing. Babe, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Um, okay, it's a little hard to push open, but I love it. I think we'll get used to that. It's like, it's like, see? Oh yeah, that's fancy. Not too bad. I so, love it, I love it, I love it. What do you think, buddy? What do you think, sweet boy? <gasps> what do you think? Oh. What is that? A what? Uh oh. Well, I mean, do you see it? Was I not supposed to say anything about that? I am going to call that a mission accomplished for getting a door done in time for a baby shower and a mission failed for making a patch so clean even my wife with OCD doesn't notice it. But here are some reveal shots along with a shot of that drywall that I did such an amazing job on. And I would like to know where you guys stand on this new modern door versus the old style hardware. So every week I like to give a little bit of credit to people who make it all the way to the end of the video. So this week, start your question or comment with either old hardware or no hardware to let me know where you stand.